What's the word, y'all? Before the season started, I dropped a video titled something like, I'm afraid for these two teams. And in that video, I talked about the Chicago Bulls and the Miami Heat potentially being left behind by that competition. And we over a quarter of the way through the season, and that video range true right now. The Miami Heat are 12 and 15, and the Bulls are 11 and 14. Shout out to my Bulls, though. This video is not about y'all. You know what I'm saying? Currently on the win streak. Um, but instead, I want to talk heavily about the Miami Heat because this season has been extremely confusing for me before we do that let's talk about our sponsor prize picks hit the link in the description down the prize picks app and use code kenny because they're matching all deposits up to 100 dollars for new players prize picks is daily fantasy that's just you versus the numbers you pick some of your favorite or least favorite nba players you pick something like points rebounds assists you see the number and you decide if you think the person is going to have more or less than a number for example today was a good day i put together this five pick flex and as you see aaron gordon did not hit more on his points but i still walk out in the green because with flex plays if you do get a five out of five in this case is a 10x but i got four out of five which is a 2x which is still positive and i'm playing prize picks every single day it just adds another element to my watching experience as an nba fan so hit the link in the description they got the nfl they got the mlb once it's around they got esports cs go call of duty league the, the options are nearly endless if it's a, a a sport it's probably on prize picks hit the link in the description down the prize picks app and use code kenny all right so today the Miami Heat lost a game to the San Antonio Spurs and the Heat have been a team that I've been watching but reluctant to, to like have an opinion on because bro they have had the injury bug more than so many teams in basketball so much so that like Yadonis Haslam got real life play in that back-to-back -back against the Boston Celtics. I know it went viral. Jason Tatum blowing past Udonis Haslam. They needed Udonis Haslam to play. A game earlier, they played against the Washington Wizards, and, like, they has eight people. And two of those people ain't even... Drew Smith, I didn't know until that point. Or the Orlando... Orlando, so I don't know his name to this day. So they have been in and out of the lineups. Jimmy Butler's missed a game here, missed a game there. Tyler Hero's out with this and that. Victor Depot is just coming back from his, his injuries. So I'm watching these games like, I'm going to hold my opinions. I'm going to hold my opinions. It's the Miami Heat. They always figure out a way. The season feels different. And I mean different, not that I think that they're going to continue to be a sub-500 team. They're going to miss the playoffs or even that they're going to be a, a, a lower team. But like in the form of contention. You know, this is a team that was built to be a contender. Jimmy's got all the money in the world. They paid Cal Lari, Bama, the bios of the contract. Tyler Hero's got his back. Duncan Robs has got his back. They paid their players because they thought that this core was going to be good enough to compete for a championship. And last year, they almost did. Jimmy Butler took a shot in transition. I, I don't look back on that shot. Well, okay, you could probably look back on that shot and say it wasn't the best shot. But they were this close to being in the finals but this team is different than that one they have lost some of that depth they've lost some of that productivity and and you can tell every single day i watched this game against the spurs because it was the first game of the day and i was i was blown away at how bad it really looked and you know what you know how bad it is because yesterday or, or two days ago they played against the the clippers right you know i follow some people in heat twitter or whatever and in that clippers game bam out of bio and jimmy butler ran a pick and roll and heat twitter was on fire because they've been together for what four three seasons four seasons now and they hadn't run pick and roll they did it what twice in that game and i keep i kept seeing the clips oh my god is this this is about to happen the miami Heat finally using jimmy as a as a pick and roll handler with, with bam and they didn't do it one time this game. The very next game, not I didn't see it one time. Maybe I was in a bad throw, but I, have, I didn't see it one singular time. And the possessions that it did happen in the Clippers, I think it was literally two, led to points. And it didn't happen at all today. But it's deeper than that. The reason they're sub-500 is not because Jimmy and Bam don't run enough pick and roll. It's a lot deeper than that. It's partially because the lack of depth within the organization. Today specifically, you got Jimmy Butler giving you 30. You had Tyler Hero giving you 23 on 50% shooting, 68% from three. Bam was not as aggressive today as he had been in the last couple weeks, but you got a good Jimmy game and a good Tyler Hero game and a good shooting split from, from Kyle Lowry against possibly the worst team in all the best, a team that was just on an 11 game, the first team to hit a double-digit loser streak on the season. That alone should be enough. And, and they were actually missing some people today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The Spurs are missing people today. That should be enough to beat the Spurs. But um, you look past that starting five, you're like, oh, snap. Max Strews played 15 minutes, and he scored four points. I don't think he touched the floor in the second half. That's something we can talk about in a second. Victor Oladipo is coming back from his injuries. He played 20-some minutes. He tried to close out the game. He fouled out. 
Dwayne Detman is one, is one of the worst backup bigs in basketball for a team that needs size. They desperately need size in this team. So you have to play Dwayne Detman. He shot one for eight from three, or one for eight from the field and 0 for three from three. And I'm pretty sure one of those three point attempts was a complete air ball. Like it's, it's ugly. And Duncan Robinson's got paid a lot of money and he only can play eight minutes a game and be a negative out there. They have no depth. They're second worst in basketball when it comes to bench production. And I think the only team worse than them, and I'm talking just str strictly points, is the Portland Trailblazers. They making it work because a lot of the people off their bench are like dirty work players. Justice Winslow going to end up with eight points, eight rebounds, and four assists. So, you know, they lack a little bit of depth. But at least they're making it work. The Miami Heat are not making it work right now. It can't always be just Hero. It can't always just be Bam. Or it can't always be just Jimmy. And that, that made me look into, like, their lineup stats. And if you look at this, these are the top lineups in basketball when it comes to point differential, uh, countering points per possession scored versus points per possession given up. And the number one lineup is Maxi, Thibault, Harris, Tucker, and Embiid. It's pretty interesting. As you can see down here, the fourth best lineup given point differential is this Miami Heat lineup of Kyle Lowry, Max Struess, Caleb Martin, Jimmy Butler, and Bam Adebayo. They're in the 99th percentile when it comes to points per possession. And the defense ain't as good um, in the 50th percentile. But if you're going to be this good, which I mean, I'm assuming that they probably won't be if you do more than 127 possessions. I'm just saying there's something here on the offensive side with this five that could be working if they play more. And what do you notice about that five? It's no Tyler Hero. Uh, the, the team, when Tyler Hero has started, and this is, again, I know this could be taken out of context saying that Tyler Hero's the problem because he started. He's not the problem. He's part of the problem, just like everybody else on the roster. But the lack of bench production is one of the problems. And this is one of your best lineups. Makes me think that Tyler Hero maybe should be coming off the bench a little bit more. And again, some of this stuff probably is not sustainable. I'm talking about the 99th percentile when it comes to point score, poor possession with this one. And that's saying a lot because the Miami Heat and the half court aren't very good. They also don't run the fast break. So the offense in completely right now is broken. When I say they don't run a fast break, I'm not joking. They are dead last in the frequency of a fast break, whether that be off transition and their 28th off live rebounds. They do not get out and push the pace. And I got to be honest with you, even if they did turn the season around, it's hard for the way it looks currently constructed for me to ever really believe that they can be in that championship contention. I don't understand how Kyle Lowry is playing as many minutes as he is. Shout out to him. Congratulations. Like, like he deserves a medal for the amount of minutes he's putting on his body this late in his career. But if he keeps at this pace and they do make the playoffs and they do try to make this legendary push to the finals, I can't say I believe that his body's going to hold up. And I can say the same about a couple different people on their roster. And like I said, I do believe there's a world where they do go on a run. It's the Miami Heat. I, I've given them the benefit of the doubt. There's one thing I mentioned when I was doing my Eastern Conference rankings. I all always give the Miami Heat the benefit of the doubt because they show us time in and time out that when it's time to win games, they find a way to do it. But right now, they dug themselves into a nice little hole here, and, and it's not looking great. So much so that I'm seeing people, again, that I follow within Heat Twitter that's like, you know what? I've seen enough. And that's saying a lot. That Charles Barkley went on TV and said, it's time for the Miami Heat to blow it up. And again, that, is, that would be kind of crazy in my opinion. I still believe that there's something that can be done. But they got a lot of negative contracts in my opinion. And it's like, how, how do we turn what we have right now into a team that can win it all? Because I promise you, if you trade for, trade for Jay Crowder, that don't fix a lot of the problems. It makes you better, for sure. It makes you better. But that don't fix all the problems. If you trade for Kyle Kuzma, that makes you better. But that doesn't fix all of the problems so what can we do to keep this core of jimmy of bam and hero because i mean you gave hero that money i mean yeah yeah keep him around at this point how do we maximize it because jimmy's timeline is, is unknown because he's getting better with time i mean I've, I've some of the games they recently won is literally jimmy putting on that backpack and say hey i got us whether it be the first game back versus the the celtics or the game that night against the Clippers where he hit a couple possessions down the stretch where he led them to victory. He does that. Tonight, I would have loved to see him get the ball down the stretch. He did not touch the ball. Um, but I don't know what his timeline is. How long can he keep up this elite level play? You got Bam, who's young. You got Hero, who's young. But what can we do to maximize the Jimmy Butler greatness? And I think that's something that Pat Riley and that front office have to figure out. Because if you can't maximize that and you want to just continue to run with this roster, there's a lot of teams out there that would be interested in current Jimmy Butler. That's all I'm saying. I'm always uh, down for a blow up, though.
I, oh, I, I love a Tatum blow it up. And I'm not saying that he should again, but uh, oh, I just love to look at a superstar get traded, look at the value of that trade, and then go back three years later and be like, dang, they gave up a lot to get Paul George. You know, that type of stuff. I, I love those stuff. They gave up a lot to get Vucevic on the t stuff like that. Some of them are funner than others for sure. All right, other things around the association. I tweeted earlier today that Cam Thomas is a hilarious basketball player. He's, a, he's an, not a hilarious basketball player. He's a hilarious NBA player because he's got the archetype that you see at the YMCA, that you see at Lifetime, the dude that want to take all of the shots. And today he was a bucket. You know what I'm saying? They ended up winning this game where they shot every single starter. And I felt bad for the Indiana Pacer fans that went there to go see KD or Kyrie because obviously KD and Kyrie are a show. Um, and they ended up with this game. But it ended up being a good game. But, like, if you wanted to see KD and ended up with a Cam Thomas game, I would be kind of hot. Uh, but, but Cam is the only dude that's, like, high mid-range volume and a guy that doesn't play. You know what I'm saying? Usually we talk we talk about people that take a majority of their shots to mid-range. We talk about D book we talk about KD we talk about DeMar DeRozan we talk about Chris Paul when he's hit like we talk about some of the all-star caliber players you don't see people in the tier of Cam Thomas that's taking shots like that and this might feel that I, I, I might you know what I'm saying offensive people when I say this when I watch Cam Thomas you know he reminds me of he reminds me of Antonio Blakeney I, he, he's he's better he's a better version but like I watched Antonio Blakeney in Chicago for two seasons this is that we're like, I ain't going to get a lot of minutes, but when I do get my minutes, I'm going to get my shots up. And they're going to be heavily contested. And they might fall. Um, They failed today for Cam, but uh, throughout the season, they have not failed. Watch Denver versus Utah. Um, And, and I mentioned in my ad that Aaron Gordon did get it, didn't get his over. He missed all of his three-point shots. I'm not mad at you, Aaron. But they subbed into this game, Jokic, um, Gordon, and Murray together. It was like a mass sub. And on the broadcast, they said, all right, the big three is back. I was like, oh, snap. Aaron Gordon is getting put into a big three conversation. And it, it 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 makes sense in the context of their organization. He's having one of the best seasons of his career, if not the best season of his career. 42% from three is something he's never even been close to in his lifetime. And that's including him being a bad corner shooter. He's shooting 21% from the corners and anything non-corner related, he's shooting 52%. Now, I want to remind you, through the first, like, two weeks of the season, he couldn't hit a goddamn shot. So you'd start off with terrible shooting, and then he got hot, 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 and now he cannot miss. So you know what? Call it a big three if you want to. Forget it. I'm here for it. And they end up uh, winning. Uh, Nikola Jokic is insane. Um, and Jamal Murray's got his confidence back. He hit the game run a couple days ago. And today, he he came into this game with his chest out. And he uh, he's playing the best basketball since uh, the injury, which is perfect. You know what else is perfect? The record of Steph Curry and Klay Thompson both putting up 30. What is it, 14 and 0 or something like that? They have not lost a game where both Clay and Steph have put up 30. In the entirety of them being together, which is a crazy stat. The NBA Finals rematch didn't live up to the hype. They had moments in it where it was exciting, but for the most part, the, the Golden State Warriors dominated uh, night in, night out. Jonathan Kaminga, when he's given the minutes, he's consistently showing like, hey, I can I can play at this level. He got the crazy dunk on Tatum in this game, which was really fun. And um, James Wiseman got sent back to the G, so that's kind of something. All right, that's wraps. I'm, I'm going to try my hardest now that I'm back. I don't think I have any trips until All-Star Weekend. I'm going to try my absolute hardest to try to get y'all content here every single day. The problem is when I leave, these videos are so, like, reactionary that if I'm in Atlanta, I can't really film for this channel. I can film for my other channels. I can film six days in advance for it, but these are so reactionary because the NBA is changing every single day. Um, and I felt bad going away for three days and not having any content for y'all. So my apologies, you know what I'm saying? Big money calls, I had to go, you know what I'm saying? I'm under contract. Uh, but we back and I don't have to go anywhere to all star. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to try to keep myself accountable. Um, tweet at me if I don't upload because y'all can hold me accountable too.